Hey, Billy Glisson with Power Pro 360. In today's video, we're gonna jump into the hips and the pelvis. We're gonna get into the strength activities that you can do before performance, before workout, to activate your hips, excite your hips, get your nervous system ready so you can step on the court, step on the field, wherever you're at, and be ready to create power from the get-go. We're not gonna do passive stretches, so let's get into it. Hey, stick around to the end of this video. I'll give you access to the playlist where you can see all the strength exercises we use when we warm up our athletes. I'm gonna look at my right hip and my left hip, and the first thing I'm gonna do is actually measure how much active range of motion I have before I start my work in there, all right? So I got a piece of tape on the ground, it's sitting at a 90 degree angle. I'm gonna look at my right hip first. I'm gonna put my right foot right in the middle of that 90 degree angle. All my weight on the right foot, just got my left foot just tippy toed on the ground for some balance and stability. I'll take a little alignment stick here, I stick it across the front of my pelvis. What I'm looking for is I should have about preferably 45 degrees motion of uh, internal and external rotation. In other words, when I lay the stick on the ground, I should be able to get 45 degrees of motion from my hip, right and left, right? So if I'm measuring here, I got all my weight on my right foot. The first thing I'm gonna look at, I'm gonna measure right hip internal rotation. I'll put the stick there, and right now I'm looking to get it to parallel that blue line on the ground. So I'm standing here, I'm not warmed up, and right now there's my hip internal rotation. I got about half, I got about 22 degrees of hip internal rotation. 66 years of age, been sitting in front of the computer all day, so I got 22 and a half degrees. Right now my hip is not warmed up. I'm not gonna get very much power out of it, no, not much range of motion, and right now it's at risk for an injury. If I go out and try to swing a golf club or something else rotationally, it's gonna put a lot of torque in that hip joint. I'm looking for a label tear, or other things if I don't warm up and mobilize and stabilize this hip. All right, that's internal rotation over there. Now let's look at external rotation. I take my hip the other way, and I don't quite get to 45 degrees. Maybe I'm around 37, 38, but I'm better in terms of external rotation here than I am with hip internal rotation. The key is for me as a golfer, I need to be able to sit and get deep into my right hip and wind up back into my right hip to create sequencing and power from the ground up. But right now, my right hip's not ready for that. All right, let's go to the left hip. Left foot on the ground, same thing I'm looking for now. Weights on my left foot, right foot just tippy-toed here, stick there. So I'm gonna look for internal rotation first. And about the same thing, I'm coming over here. I'd like the stick to be able to get parallel with this blue line. Right now, I'm getting about half of that. So I got about 22 degrees of hip internal rotation on my left hip. If I look at external rotation, well, I've got a lot over there. I'm past the line, so um, man, I've really got to get internal rotation on my left hip and my right hip. I've got one of our light bands, our great bands, I'm hooking up to my right hip. I got the band at hip level, ground level, down on the floor in front of me. I'm putting the band angle about 45 degrees out in front of me. All I'm going to do is sit down into a tall athletic posture, and all I'm just doing is I'm just slowly turning into my right hip, right? So my right foot is actually pushing into the ground. I have bare feet on because I wanna be able to feel the ground and use the ground. I don't wanna just twist my hips. I want basically my feet to interact with the ground, so I'm pushing my right foot into the ground. And in golf, I wanna end up back on my heel. So I'm pushing my leg down, I'm straightening my leg, and in the process, I'm figuring out what muscles I have to use to use the ground and turn my hips to the right. And I'm just gonna do 10 of those, right? Nothing special. As I do this and I get back into there, man, I can feel a big stretch back through my glutes, through my piriformis, which oftentimes is tight. So I'm basically taking the muscles around my pelvis, we're gonna call that six, and I'm just pushing down in the ground and I'm working on hip internal rotation. I'm warming the joint, but I'm warming the joint not by passively stretching it. I'm using the muscles around my hips, my pelvis, my core, my spine, to actually get deeper back into my right hip. I'm gonna do about three more. As I do that, I can feel how my body's sitting down into my hips better, but all that's just my feel. Let's see what happens after I do 10 reps. Strict exercises, not passive stretches, and let's look and see what happens to hip internal rotation. Before I turned about 22 degrees, I said, I got all my weight on my right foot and boom, I'm now past the 45 degrees. So I've added probably almost 25, 30 degrees of hip internal rotation by doing a strengthening activity that took me 10 reps one minute to do, right? Let's look at external rotation. Before I didn't quite get to the 45, 
Now, boom, I'm past the 45 over there. So 10 reps, sitting down into my hips, using the ground, a little light resistance band and hip harness. I'm learning how to turn those muscles on. My hip is now dynamically warmed up. I got synovial fluid in there. I got warmth in the tissues. More importantly, I got the nervous system activated. So if I'm a golfer, which I am, and I want to sit down deeper into my right hip and use the ground and turn back the other way, well, I got to have the range of motion, the mobility and stability down into that right hip. All right, let's look at the left hip. Um, we assessed it earlier. I'm going to do the same drill, the same 10 reps. This time I'm going to take the band. I'm going to hook to my left hip. The band's out in front of me, about 45 degrees in front of my right hip. I'm doing the same motion. I'm using my left foot. I'm pushing into the ground. I'm pushing from the ball of my foot back into my heel. You'll see my left leg straightening up. And I'm using the muscles around my hips, my pelvis, my core, my spine, just to push the left hip back out of the way. And I'm doing 10 reps of that slow and controlled. These are strength exercises. I'm not being pulled into this position. I'm having to use the muscles, my, the ground, and active strength exercises to actually, I'm gonna do about five more, get deeper back into that right hip. So this right hip motion, I'm going into internal rotation. That's stretching glute max, glute med, piriformis. Everything back there that doesn't want to allow me to internally rotate might be tight. And do two more. I'm using those. I'm also building, you've noticed with me, I'm building the same pattern. I've done this so many times. I'm trying to build a specific pattern of a golf swing. So I'm doing a strength activity that's actually preparing me to do the movements of the feet, the ground, the legs, the hip motion, the lower half of the body to do my golf swing. All right, 10 reps. Take that off. Over here before on the left leg, hip internal rotation was, it was about 22 and a half degrees. In other words, the stick didn't get to the 45 degree, got about halfway there. Now let's see what we have, okay? Boom, I'm past the 45 degrees. So I'm now pretty even going right and left. I've got really good hip internal rotation right and left, especially for somebody that's 66 years of age. That's pretty good, right? Now let's look at external rotation. I go the other way and boom, it's, it's about where it was to begin with. I was going past that when I started, right? This is about the same, but it changed right hip and left hip internal rotation. So for me, if I'm a golfer, a hockey player, baseball player, soccer player, whatever the case is, lacrosse, where I really need to get down into the ground and use my legs and hips, I can now turn further back into my right hip. I can wind up into the ground. I can wind up into my hips. And now I'm ready, ready to sequence and use the power from the ground, my feet, my legs, my hips, to turn the lower half and generate that power, rotational power from the ground up. How did we do it? We did 10 reps to the right hip, 10 reps to the left hip, light bands, right into the hips, right into the pelvis, strength exercises. If you took all the talking away, we probably have two minutes or less of the actual active strengthening uh, reps, mid time if you would, to warm them up, get them prepared. No passive stretching. I'm ready to go. I can pick up a club now, swing the club, and my feet and my hips are ready to go. Next video, we'll come back, we'll talk about the spine, and then we'll work our way up into the shoulders. Hey, thanks for sticking around to the end. Click on the graphic down below. It'll take you to a playlist on our YouTube channel where you can see the strength exercises we use to warm up our athletes. Hey, if you like this video, give us a like down below. Subscribe to our channel. If you want further information about our products or master classes or services, go to PowerCore360.com.